Hey, everybody. I hope everyone is doing really well and staying safe at home. Let's talk movies. Of all the movies that I've made, there is one that comes up more than any other, and that is Legally Blonde. And I think it's because of Elle Woods. I think she just inspired people to believe in themselves. She just has a true sense of herself, and she always wants to see the best in others. She's inspired me to really keep an open mind and always be an advocate for myself and for other people in this world. And I think her spirit is something that we could all use a little bit more of right now. We decided after almost 20 years, it was time to have a reunion because we love each other and we wanted to share the joy that we had making this film with all of you. But first, we wanted to take a moment to shine a light on a wonderful organization that's doing so much good right now, World Central Kitchen, a nonprofit that works to provide food relief around the country. In response to COVID-19, World Central Kitchen has visited dozens of American cities to distribute fresh meals to frontline workers and communities in need. You can visit wck.org to support this wonderful organization. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our moderator for this very fun reunion. Her name is Chloe Feynman, and she is a cast member on Saturday Night Live. And fun fact, I saw an impression that Chloe did of me on YouTube where she was playing my character in Big Little Lies and Nicole Kidman's character. So I might have DM'd her and asked her if she would join us today. So Chloe. Hi! Hi! I'm so excited. Legally Blonde is my hands-down favorite movie. My daughter called me when she saw you and Sarah Ramos doing the reenactment from the end of Legally Blonde. You did the whole trial on Instagram. And isn't it the first cardinal rule of per maintenance that you're forbidden to wet your hair for at least 24 hours at the risk of deactivating the ammonium thyglocaline? I still can't even say it. I was like, ammonium time, ammonium time. So impressive. <laughs> <laughs> you get to moderate this event, and I'm just going to pass it on over to you. Okay, Reese, let's bring in the cast. Hi, Luke. Hey, Reese. It's oh, Emma. This is kind of like a high school reunion. You look so well, handsome. <laughs> oh, gosh, thanks. You, you guys both look the same, which is unbelievable. <laughs> Oh my God. What's going oh on God. in there? Hey. Hi. You are just a wonder and a sight for sore I'm eyes. So I'm I already so glad. cried over Luke. I'm going to cry over you too. Hey. Hey. How is everyone? Good? This is wild. Doesn't Luke look Yeah, so Luke, handsome? where are you? Luke, where are you? You are there. Hi, Holly. I'm so excited. I'm feeling like the luckiest guy in America right now. <laughs> it's a Brady Bunch sandwich right now, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to hug and smooch you off. Oh I've been feeling so lonely since the pandemic. It's so exciting to be around people my own age. I have no social <laughs> skills anymore. I don't know what to talk about. Hot flash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have my can right here. <laughs> Just, you know, because it's going to happen. So this film is absolutely iconic. Legally Blonde is literally known all around the world. Did you realize when you were shooting how big of an impact this film would be? Oh my gosh, no, not at all. I don't think any of us knew what this film was was gonna turn out to be, or how much it would inspire young women and, and young people across the world. I've traveled the entire world and I always, always, the movie that people stop me about is Legally Blonde. And the thing that, that actually really touches my heart is more people stop me and say, I went to law school because I would, which is wow. really amazing. Does anyone know what was Elle's final LSAT score? 171? I'm going to be broken. I think it was 179. It's 179. Wow. 179. What line do fans tend to quote the most when they come up to you? Well, people always, always ask me to do the bend and snap. I think I dropped something on the floor that I need to pick up. 
So you bend and snap. <laughs> So that was a full musical sequence that we ended up cutting out of the movie. We filmed that for a month. We had all these dancers behind us, including Ryan Heffington was one of the dancers. I don't know if you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It was just so fun. And we ended up, it just felt odd because it was only one musical sequence. But then it made so much sense when they made a whole musical out of the, the movie. The line that people remember the most is what? Like, it's hard? I, I, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? No, silly. I go here. You, you go where? Harvard. Law school. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? <laughs> it's a seminal classic. Who knew, right? I remember it was burning hot outside. I was sweating right. buckets. Sophie Dracoff was like, you are wearing the sweater, you are buttoning up the collar, and you are high. It has to be this way. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Weren't those scenes shot at UCLA by Royce Hall? Remember, because we did the roller skating one there? It was hot at UCLA. Yeah. I remember when you and I were in the pool talking about evil Stefano. We were out in Pasadena and it was like 400 degrees while we were shooting that. You had to time the pool floats to float by so that you floated by. Just like the exact wasn't there a guy with like a stick who was pushing it? <laughs> hey Elle, do you know what happened on Days of Our Lives yesterday? Well, yes, Margo, I do. Once again, we join Hope in the search for her identity. As you know, she's been brainwashed by the evil Stefano. You guys, I think we have a surprise guest. Hi. Hi. My apologies, we have a five-month-old, and oh so we are running around like crazy today. So how long has it been, 20 years? We shot it in 2000, and then it came out in 2001. I just remember you, know, you having the baby. Wasn't Ava like a year old? When we were yeah. shooting, yeah, I kept saying to you every morning as you get a blowout and your nails would look perfect, and I'd say, "Oh my God, are you exhausted? Exhausted? Why would I be exhausted? I mean, I'm young, and I was like, way to appreciate that. I am also not old, and I am dying. You always had so much energy, and I remember the baby there. Your energy, yeah, for sure. Funny suit. Is I knew this movie would be big. Honestly, I'm such an ass kisser, but the the real truth is, she was. <laughs> She was so good that you're like, okay, if she signed on to this, this is for real, like, not just a weird pink thing. It's like real. Walk me through the audition process. Were you so excited to play Vivian? Like, what was your take on her? I think my audition was basically like Robert said, okay, make your face. You see Elle Woods, and now you really see Elle Woods. And it was like... That was it. That was like my whole You must have heard it from Vivian. <sighs> She's horrible. You've got the ring, sweetie. <sighs> so Luke, you play Emmett, Elle's eventual love interest, and one of the only dudes who was actually an ally to Elle. Were you excited when you landed the film? To see it on the page, the way it's written, it definitely had, you know, heart and humor and these themes of believing in herself but then when you saw this character that reese was playing and she had like a different walk and a different accent and like her hair and like you know her costume she definitely was playing this kind of over the top character but kind of based in reality yeah when she first walked on set it was like you know it was like eddie murphy is like the the nutty professor or something and it kept making me think of dustin hoffman and tootsie <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just called me a butthead. I mean, no one's called me a butthead since about the ninth grade. Maybe not to your face. Paulette is so iconic. Her outfits are next level, the frosted lips, the hair. What were some of your favorite looks? I loved my mustard colored hair. It matched all of my clothes in some weird way, but that was all secondhand mm -hmm. clothing. Reese, you're L. You're so pulled together as you, as a human being, just as yourself. Then when you were playing L, you were really pulled together. 
and I just naturally felt like a loser. I believed everything you said to me. I believed it, and I didn't feel like we were shooting a movie. Shooting the scene where you, you say, I'm taking the dog, you dumbass. Tell him, Paulette. I'm taking the dog, dumbass. <laughs> but I yeah. Stop laughing. You were so funny. Can I ask a question to the group of what your favorite outfit was? With well, a cheerleading outfit was really fun because I was constantly in that just one uniform, right? Do you guys know what Alana and I did to get her cast? Robert called me to read with the Serena uh, actresses, and I was like, "Great!" So I came in to read with them. Right before the reading, I went to the bathroom, and there was this cute little petite Spitfire putting on lip gloss. Hey, and she looks at me, hey, 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 I don't like this, I don't like this lip gloss. You, you have red lipstick? And I was like, what? She, like we were in a bar, she asked me for her lipstick, took my lipstick, put my lipstick on, she goes, hey, hey, are you in this movie? Is it you, are you the actress? And I said, yeah, yeah I'm playing Margot, why? And she goes, I need to make rent. I don't have any money, I have a work, I need to make rent, will you help me make rent? She was so funny and so ballsy, I said, okay. So I got, I went out the side and I told him I needed five minutes to make a phone call. I went in the bathroom with Alana and we we planned every move with every line. Oh, I'm gonna oh, yeah. Yeah. And then We choreographed simultaneous moves. I did the scene with her and she did the coordinated moves. I threw the whole audition to get her the job. Oh. And she's been my best yeah, friend. Yeah. That is amazing. Totally. Professor Stormwell has such an iconic moment. If you're going to let one stupid prick ruin your life. You're not the girl I thought you were. I just want to know how did that resonate with you and your career? It's really a moment when an older person sees a younger person who's, who could be really knocked off her pins. Mm. And she just, it really doesn't take much, because I think we've all had that experience, and hopefully we all have, where some senior person really cuts right through it and sees it and just gives you a little shove and a little lift. And, and it was a yeah. very sweet moment to play, but I had no, I had no idea how it was really recognized. So 20 years later, it's still a big, a big thing for, for young women. Matt, you play Warner. Elle's former love interest. Is it safe to say that Elle is the one that got away? How could she not be? And I wonder what that's like for <laughs> you. Yeah. Like, people like think you're this character? For years, for years and years, I'd have people <laughs> assault me like, you're, you're that person. asshole from Legally Blonde. Come on, you're never gonna get the grades to qualify for one of those spots. You're not smart enough, sweetie. I'm here to tell people that Matthew Davis is the nicest person. Yeah. He was just oh, like, God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would treasure yeah. that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. My experience working with you, Reese, was un unparalleled. And I learned so much uh, from working with you. And it was such a joy. And I was so out of my league. <laughs> I literally was just off the back of a tournament truck out of Salt Lake City, Utah. I couldn't get out of Utah fast enough, and I stumbled in my way into this movie called <laughs> Legally Blonde. I was crapping my pants every step of the way. Because I remember the first <laughs> scene we shot together. I sat down, and all of a sudden, Elle Woods was there. And Elle Woods was so big and so full of life. And I realized that all my choices were wrong. I just remember that the director came over and whispered to me, Robert goes, I want you to scream really loud. And it was day one and we were in this restaurant. And when you tell me that you're gonna break up with me, he went to do this shot where he came in and he's like, you gotta scare the crap out of him. What? Well, I've been thinking about it and I think it's the right thing to do. I remember the first day Jennifer Coolidge, you showed up on the set and yeah. she looking for her trailer and I was outside mine and she looks at me and she goes, am I in the right place? Is this legally one? And I said, yeah. And she goes, she goes, this is like a World War II movie. I thought we were shooting a comedy. It's so serious around here. Everybody's so serious. I was like, and I'll never forget that moment. Everyone from the actor, the UPS guy delivering a package and 
Oh. Like everyone was so perfect. And Holland Taylor in that room, I mean, the presence you had. And I say this just to celebrate something that hasn't come along. So my point is that each one of you, like Luke, every single one, Matt, Dave, it was like everyone created like a really iconic snapshot of what needed to be for this movie. The stars were aligned so perfectly. And Reese, you were really like the guiding light. And we, you elevated us all to a place of focus and dedication and seriousness and commitment because life is easy, comedy is hard, right? Except for Jennifer, but also comedy just comes naturally. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it never occurred to me that when we're not shooting, that some people actually stay in character so they, they you know. But that never occurred to me. I'm like, ah, we're at craft service. I can be me. I was at craft service and um, and you were there too. And you came up behind me and I, I was stuffing my face with these donuts. They're the most delicious donuts on Legally Blonde. And I was eating like, I don't know, three at a, three at a time, whatever. And uh, I turned around and there you were and I go, and I go, oh my God, Reese, I can't stop eating these donuts. I can't stop. And then you just look at me and you go, then just don't. Don't eat them. <laughs> and it just, it was, you were then, and then you just turned around and left. And I was like, oh my God, like she's her character at the craft service table. Maybe I would be better if I just made it one continual thing. <laughs> the commitment that everyone's talking about is very real because, um, I mean, you, I forget my lines. I'd say something to you and you would be so believable. I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I realized I, I was supposed to do my line. So Allie, I love the yeah. jail scene with Mel and Brooke and how Brooke put her pride and business before the truth. Did you understand that mm -hmm. perspective? Like what would you have done? When I first read the script, I was actually coming in for one of the Thor girls and because we're the same, me and Reese are the same age, and I wanted to go in for Brooke Wyndham because I love that this woman, like, you know, you think she's a gold digger, then you realize that this woman, like, built an empire, and she had just fallen in love with this man, and that she believes in this. She's also extraordinarily vain, and she was, like, over the top and wanted to be fabulous, and she would never let anyone know this about her. And that scene, I actually auditioned with Robert Lupetic, and I remember... It being like, how can I really sell him and show him that I really want to do this part and that I can make this really, really well and fun. And I just remember getting, it was just so true to me. It was so dire to her. Like this was, everything was on the line for this. And I just reached over and I grabbed my ass as hard as I could and just went <laughs> for it. And he was like, all right, you got it, girl. You committed. I wanted someone to totally commit to it. Yeah, yeah. And I guess this was what this movie kind of really meant to me and what it was, is that anyone could be who they wanted to be. And that's what I loved about Elle Woods, which was so inspiring and about these characters is that she just, you know, people would like, you know, not believe in her and Elle would just let it roll right up her shoulder and keep coming back with this positive kind of attitude. And I loved getting to kind of play against that with Brooke, so. <laughs> what? I was getting my function. Huh? My function! Oh, God! No. I know, I'm a fraud! It's not like normal women can have this ass! But it was only another sorority sister that she could share this, like, extreme secret with. So, it was keeping it real down, real deep in there. Alana, what was your favorite memory of filming? I remember uh, befriending this lovely Vietnamese background. Oh. Chris, before we had the manicure scene. And I thought, how funny would it be if we frequent this manicure, if we frequent this nail salon so much that I've been immersed in, Vietnam, in Vietnamese and I picked up the language. So I asked her, I said, uh, how do you say this in Vietnamese? How do you say that? So she sat next to me and we practiced and practiced and practiced for an hour. So when I came back, I asked Mark Platt, who was on set at the time, I said, do you mind if I do something really kind of weird and odd? And maybe you can put little subtitles at the bottom. He was like, yeah, gosh, you're weird. Just do your thing and we'll see if it works or not. 
And so I remember finally saying it and this lovely Vietnamese lady, she looked at me and she was like, you did it, you did it, all right, yeah, you pronounced it beautifully. I was like, oh! <sighs> Okay, let's right. also so, not forget what a great job Robert Luketic did. He was a yes. really yes. good part of this. Yes. I mean, he really did a great job picking all those great moments. And he, to me, was definitely yes. one of those guys. Just a, a gentle but firm hand that, that kind of led yeah. it along. And I remember him saying his job was just to get it, let us rip. He'd say, you, I'd let you guys perfect the character and, and you'd let it rip. Like in the scene where Margot falls off the bridal stand, I said, Robert, uh, you, can I fall? And he was like, get her a mattress, get her a mattress. And they brought the mattress in. Because I'm getting married, I'm getting married. Ah! And he was like that with everyone, like you, Alana, and you. he would let people, he gave us a lot of freedom. Oh my God, there she is, Ella. Ella. We came to see your trial. Oh, look how cute. There's like a judge and everything. And jury people. Vote for Al! Ladies, take a seat. Thank you to Chloe for getting us all together and moderating all our crazy voices and lots of talking. And thank you for yes. doing this because she's right. on Saturday Night Live <laughs> right now. So check her out on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Wow. And y'all, so I just... I can't tell you yeah. what it means to me to see your faces. I'm so like, this is, this is like, a this was my college. You guys, this is where I went to college. I didn't finish college, but I finished Lily Blonde. And we all got Woo! together and made this movie together that has inspired so many young people. And um, it's just such a gift. In one career in one lifetime to have a film like this that means so much to so many people. I just, every time people come up to me and tell me they love this movie, I give it all to you. I share it all with you all. So I love you so much, and thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you guys. Bye, beautiful people. Thank you to Reese. Thank you to the cast. And thank you so much to Hello Sunshine for bringing us all here together after 20 years. What an iconic moment. And don't forget to donate to World Central Kitchen. Like and subscribe below.